So when I joined EA in 2003, uh, I, I saw I wanted to do real time camera work. And so we built this tool called ICE in game camera editor. And it was used for all the Need for Speed cutscenes as well as uh, James Bond and Skate later. Uh, and the Skate one would let the audience actually edit what they've done. But this is kind of the beginnings, the very beginnings of all the, uh, you know, the virtual tools um, that we built uh, uh, for DMM. It's basically all controller based. So here's the timeline at the bottom. You can scrub, you know, uh, scrub your, your time. What I did there was I performed a drive with the car, hit a button, and then I'm editing a scene to it. So you can make a car commercial in 10 minutes, and that's the demos I would do back in the day. This is 2005, I think. And then uh, you, red meant you're in world space and blue meant you're in car space uh, or the other way around, I forget. Uh, but you know, I'm just keyframing start and end points here. You can see the time and the frame number. And then these edit lists would basically go uh, right into the game. You know, um, and, and and that's what would be used um, anytime. Let's say you got busted uh, in the game, it would use um, it would be using these camera cuts uh, that were authored this way. Now, in 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 case of Need for Speed, they weren't actually applied to. Um, uh, they weren't opened up to the audience, sadly, as I wish it would have been, but you know, that, that would have been a pretty cool thing to do. So this is really early days of kind of real time filming. Uh, so now what we want to do is, uh, just show you guys a little glimpse of, um, something real time. If we could switch to, um, the Xbox, please. Here we go. This is the this is the way to play a game, you know, this kind of screen. <laughs> I spent hours rehearsing, you know, they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, no, I need, I need to make sure it's right. So what I'm going to do is just drive around a little bit, and then we're going to do some location scouting, and then I'll show you some uh, cinematics. So um, in terms of the world design, you can see we had to deal with uh, building synthetic env uh, environments. I'm going to fly now faster uh, we, we we basically each game has its own criteria of how to design the, the environment in the racing game the road is king the r driving has to be fun all the buildings are basically eye candy so we get to have a lot of freedom in what the environments look like primarily to design it to be fun to drive through and uh, you know I'll, I'll touch base on some of those things later on about how that relates to to real design in the real world uh, but you know, um, the, the big, biggest criteria for us is you know how to how to make flying through the game a fun experience, um, and wh where do we go from there? And you can see in this case things that the audience that plays this game normally doesn't see, which is how the world is put together. They never get to go under the under the ground. You can see there's nothing there. Um, it, just like a movie set, uh, we only build what you see. So as soon as you go up a little too high, you can see there's holes everywhere on the sides. Um, you know, you, you're not supposed to be this high up. And you can see uh, all, all the flaws. You can see things uh, uh, basically cycling in and out. You, uh, we call this visibility calling, which means that the computer is only drawing uh, what, what is visible from where I am. So if I step, step off the road, I'm not going to see anything because it, it, it hasn't encoded all that into it. Um, so this, this process of designing this whole area, uh, there's 120 kilometers of uh, environments in this, in this game, um, all of it, which had to be you know, d designed for the look of it. It has to be, it has to be something that makes sense. Um, and it, 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 it has a lot of the criteria that a real architect may use. It has a lot of criteria that someone on a film set would use, um, except that the, in, in this case, um, building the environment is very similar to if you were on a virtual you know, a digital feature. So what we're going to do now is uh, you know, I can, I can uh, drop the car right here. This is the little Italian part of town. I know Sebastian's going to be offended at all the cliches, but 
<laughs> so th this game, uh, you can see, gives you the sensation of speed. And we're able to take advantage of a lot of things that uh, the next generation platforms can do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one thing I'll do here is change the time of day. My favorite thing to do. And you can actually do this on the release game. This is Need for Speed Most Wanted. Uh, you can go there into Options Video and then change the time of day. To whatever you want. And there we have it. Different time of day. Uh, everything you're seeing is lit in real time. All the shadows are real time. Uh, the shaders are similar to what you use in film. But what I'll do now is I'll show you some cinematics. Um, we're going to go here. And show you a cinematic. Where are we? OK. Can we crank the audio on full? Takedown, wrecker en route. Attention patrol division, we have reported at least one mobile code six driver followed by police. I need all available units on this. Get them going, code three. Code three, we have reported at least one mobile code six driver followed by police. Let's hold everything. I think we can I think we can compose this into a better thing, don't you think? Why don't we go back to this shot here? Yeah, right, that one right there, yeah. Let's go here, let's zoom into that. And why don't we pick a different angle? How about from this side over here, we go wider, change the lens, maybe come down a bit, touch the camera. <laughs> That's a better framing, right? And let's take this frame and move it over here. This one can move over there. Maybe I'll change this one too. Um, copy that over here. And then when we're really close, let's bring in some depth of field. So can blur the background. Okay, I like that better. Now let's take it back to the top. There we go. So to me, this represents what people talk about, uh, you know, interactive film or how games and film can come together. Uh, there's a lot to be said for, you know, if, if a movie is being rendered in real time and there's a whole bunch of people working on that right now, uh, you know, why not go in and change something on the fly and you know, every audience can have their own experience. Different directors can do 10 different director's cuts based on the state, you know, <laughs> every week they could change the ending. Um, so there's a lot of possibilities that open up in the case of uh, when things are rendered in real time. So I'll leave you with that. And oh, it started raining. <laughs> I, don't, I can't control the weather, unfortunately, <laughs> in this version. Um, that's an unfortunate thing, just like the real weather. Although, if, if I had a computer hooked up to it, I probably could. But yeah, it's going to rain. But then, you know, the, floor, the ground gets wet and all that stuff. Anyway, thanks. <laughs>